Good evening from the HCCC. I'm your host, John Molson. Please wait a few minutes while we await the public address announcers announcement of the national anthem for game two of the Junior B quarterfinals, please now stand for the anthem. The Corvairs blew out the Port Colburn Pirates in game one last night in Port Colburn by a score of seven to nothing. Scott Dorian had two goals and two assists. Jordan Peacock, Connor Patton, and Matt Quilty each had two points for Caledonia. The Port Colburn Pirates dressed just 14 skaters and goaltender Jake Danson. Danson allowed all seven of the Port Colburn goals. Danson, the starting netminder tonight for the Pirates. Colin Furlong for the Corvairs as we're just about set to take the opening draw of game number two. Mitch Brown wins the draw over to Fontana and the Port Colburn defense throws the puck up the far side. Furlong out to play the puck. Brown on the backhand, meeting him at the wall as Royal Ledger. And Quinn Geddes up the left wing, or the right wing, excuse me, beside the poor Colburn bench to Spencer Fox. Geddes the pass up the center ice, Forslund knocking over Spencer Fox. And Abraham the long pass over center for Mitch Brown, dancing out of his net to play the disc around the near sidewall. Fox hit by Mitch Brown, and the turnover resulting in a backhand shot by Fontana. He shoots and scores! Cosimo Fontana on the turnover through the neutral zone. A weak shot on the backhand between the legs of Jake Danson. And 56 seconds in, Cosimo Fontana draws first blood in game number two for the Corvairs. Well, the horn going off and now the goal apparently being disallowed as Cody Brown wins the faceoff. Back to Kyler Nixon, the Corvairs nonetheless right back to the attack. The shot by Patton and a big hit on the sidewall. Riley Wilson, a recent call up, nailed beside the Caledonia bench by Cody Brown. Brown now receiving the pass at the blue line and dumping a pass off the sideboard. Patton on the dump and chase, now on the other side. 
And it's picked up by Joseph D'Agostino. Mens Dietrich goes up the near side wall. The long pass too far for Brandon Cullen. Ratchford up to center and the backhand tip by Quilty down the far side. Meeting Quilty at the far corner is Nick DeLuca. Back to the point, Ratchford winds up a hard slap shot and Danson getting a piece of that with the left glove. Ratchford the short pass for Quilty. The pass broken up by the Cor Port Colburn defense. Connor Murphy tips it to Jeff Malott. Murphy to the far corner and turns around at the end line before being knocked off the puck by DeLuca. A shot, the shot along the ice by Ratchford going through the legs of Danson and just wide to the far side. The shot by Ratchford getting past Jake Danson, but Danson getting enough of the puck that when it squirted through his legs, it went to the far side as opposed to down the front of the center of the net. The shot by Christmas wide to the near side, picked up by Connor Murphy. Murphy finishing the regular season with 96 points, second in the scoring race to the Chatham Maroons' Kyle Brothers. Brothers winning the scoring title with 122 points on the year. Play inside the Caledonia line. Dorian slapping at it with Spencer Fox. It's thrown in by the defender Forslund from the center ice red line. Dorian with two goals and two assists last night and the shot by Abraham trickles just wide. Brown the pass into the slot to Dorian and the shot by Dorian just over top the poor Colburn net. Four minutes into period number one, no score between the Corvairs and Pirates. The Corvairs winning game one, seven to nothing. Cosimo Fontana scoring 56 seconds in, but that goal being disallowed. Fontana, a weak backhand <laughs> off a turnover at center ice by the poor Colburn defense. But seconds later, the goal called off. And now the Pirates Ryle Ledger to the box for the first penalty of the game. The draw won from the right side by the Corvairs. Brown top of the line, backhand pass to Quilty. And the shot by Quilty on the return feed from Murphy, high over the net to the near side, touching the glass. Murphy in behind the net, skates out to the far side to Brown. Murphy checked from behind, so he throws it deep into the corner to Quilty. Quilty to Brown. Brown over to the left to Nixon. And Nixon with the cross ice pass to Quilty. And Danson making the save at the far side. <laughs> Danson with a under 900 save percentage after the seven goals allowed last night in game one. Brown the pass to Quilty, the long pass past the end line. Quilty returns it to the half wall. 55 seconds remaining in the penalty to Royal Ledger. Patton falling down at the half board near side and it's cleared by the right defense of the Pirates. Furlong out to play it. The short pass off to Nixon on his left side. Nixon to Murphy, Murphy with speed finding some room and tripped up, his legs taken out from under him by DeLuca at the left circle. Jonathan, a long pass around the boards, Fontana to the far side end line to retrieve it. 
Nixon, the shot wide off the end wall, picked up at the half board. And the Corvair is spending nearly the entire two minutes of the power play in the Port Colburn zone. They shoot and score! Briar Jonathan off the pass from Mitch Brown. So Jonathan scoring with 13.31 remaining off the Mitch Brown assist from the near side. Brown with the backdoor pass off the near side. And Jonathan depositing the puck behind Danson. Danson with no chance. Jonathan depositing the wrist shot into the far side. Round the shot off the stick of Matthew White and out of play. Fontana drawing a, or the second assist rather. At 6.39, Fontana drawing assist number two after the disallowed goal at 56 seconds. 13 minutes to play in period number one. The Corvairs winning all six meetings between these two teams during the regular season, last blowing out the Pirates 10 to one back on January the 10th. And the shot by Dorian wide to the far side. Abraham tries to play the puck down the far side by center. The puck hitting the linesman. Jake Brown taking it down the left wing. <coughs> and Dorian trying to sneak it in between the pads. <coughs> Dancing. Peacock the wrap around to the near side. And down the right wing for the Pirates is Brandon Cullen. Brown to Gourlay, Jake that is. Gourlay moves his way around the defender, hit by John DiLorenzo into the slot to Cody Brown. Brown moves off to the right wing past the end line. And Brown a pass out to the near half wall. Christmas off the left side of the blue line. Gourlay a shot, Christmas with the rebound. <laughs> And the pass out to Gourlay from Cody Brown. Play broken up at center by Cullen. Cullen wrapping it around the boards and the Pirates going off on a full change. Patton one step from center on his own side of the line, rings it around the boards. Gourlay picks it up to Ratchford. And the hard slap shot by Ratchford along the ice, blocked by Brock Ackerman. Ackerman giving chase in behind the Caledonia net. And Greg Christmas perhaps a stick between the legs on Ackerman, but Christmas skating off to the Caledonia bench. And Ackerman now skating off to the penalty box, perhaps some kind of a retaliation. The referee signaling a slashing call on the play. Ackerman felt that Christmas got the stick between the legs and due to the retaliation, he'll sit for two minutes with 11 minutes to go in period number one. And Murphy carrying the puck in offside at the far side as Matt Quilty offside at the left by a step and a half. The Corvairs going 0 for 3 in game one on the power play. And the same set of statistics for the Pirates. Both teams at 100% on the penalty kill. Murphy dumping it in between the Port Colburn net. The Corvairs 
eventually ended up finishing in the number one spot. We had reported they were at number two as of the last home game, the 6-1 victory over the Thorold Blackhawks, top of the line, Nixon to the far side. Murphy a stick in the ribs off the left side from James Mentz Dietrich. And play broken up at the far side. Cody Brown losing the puck. Spencer Fox skating it down the left wing before Kyler Nixon brings it back for the Corvairs. Mentz Dietrich plays it around the wall. Brown takes it away at the half board. Cody Brown the shot and he scores! Cody Brown from the right faceoff dot snapping a quick wrist shot. Mitch Brown with the pass out off the half wall. So Port Colburn with a turnover inside their own line and Cody Brown firing a wrist shot to the near stick side of Jake Danson. And the Corvairs now doubling up their lead at two. Cody Brown on the power play. The Corvairs getting their first power play goal in the playoffs. At 10.33, the Corvairs double up their lead. Brown from Brown, Cody from Mitch. And the shot from the right side of the line by Forsland, partially blocked by Taz Myers. <laughs> the shot by Abraham. <coughs> Jonathan looking for a rebound in front and the shot just wide by Mitch Brown from underneath the right dot. A couple steps off the point of the second goal from Cody Brown. So Jonathan on the backdoor pass from Mitch Brown at 639 and then Cody Brown scoring on the power play. Mitch Brown with the assist off the opposite side that time at 1033 and the Corvairs with the two nothing lead at the 10.33 mark, the pass across from Jake Brown, the shot by Dorian, and another shot just wide by Blunt. Dorian parking himself right in front of the Port Colburn net after his two goal performance in game one. Nixon, the shot tipped just wide by Nick DeLuca. Peacock down past the end line. Joseph D'Agostino pinning the Caledonia forward Dorian up against the wall far side. Port Colburn bringing it past center, the shot and they score. So the quick turnaround, Brandon Cullen with 7.15 remaining in the first and the Pirates cut the lead to one on the shot in between the legs of Colin Furlong. The Port Colburn Pirates getting their first goal of these 2013-2014 GOJHL playoffs as the shot by Malat wide and off the glass to the far side. Quilty beaten on the underneath by Ryle Ledger and Ledger slapping or wristing a shot to the far side rather. Ratchford back the other way by Ratchford. Mens Dietrich and Wilson grabbing assists on the goal at 7.15 from Brandon Cullen. Ratchford turns around. 
four checked by Taylor. Furlong rings it around the wall. Quilty plays it up past center and it's slapped away by Desjardins at the far side. Quilty picks it up there, skates it deep by the end line and finds some room. Quilty doing it by himself with some backward skating and then moving across to his left, firing a shot wide of the net before going on a change. And the shot by Taylor kicked aside by the left pad of Furlong on the long shot. Furlong leading all GHL goalies in goals against after the shutout last night. But, he, but Furlong allowing the first Port Colburn goal of the playoffs at 7.15. Brandon Cullen scoring in between his legs. So that will change. And the shot by Cody Brown off the outside of the post. Gourlay trying to pick up a rebound positioned off to the side of the net far side. And the shot by Forsland. Gourlay trying to play it at the near corner. A hit by Abraham, an open ice hit, and it springs a Port Colburn player free. So Abraham finding himself out of position, and the shot tipped just wide. Cullen again looking for his second. The hit by Abraham through the neutral zone, a big open ice hit by the red line. Brown over the far side. A back pass to Patton, and Patton firing a shot wide to the near side. Jonathan turns around, rings it around the boards. Blunt moving off the right side of the blue line to play it. The Pirates play it back to center ice, and Nixon to the far side to Blunt. Blunt the up feed to Jonathan down the right wing, the pass too far for him. And an icing with 4.17 to go in period number one in other series. <coughs> the Elmira Sugar Kings topped the Brampton Bombers <coughs> four to one last night The to lead their best of seven series quarter final one game to nothing the Kitchener Dutchman blanking the Listowel Cyclones six to nothing also last night Niagara Falls squeaking by the Welland Junior Canadians three to two Tuesday night to lead that best of seven series by a game and the Waterloo Siskins Topping the Guelph Hurricanes two to one also on Tuesday night. A delay here as four Port Colburn players wait by the Caledonia Blue Line. And now a discussion at the Caledonia bench. Patton being carried off by Christmas and Abraham, an injury here to Connor Patton. So bad news for the Corvairs. Patton skating very slowly back to the Caledonia dressing room. Patton with 26 goals and 25 assists for 51 points for the Corvairs. Over a point a game, so a big loss for Caledonia. Did not see what happened there. Patton was already at the Caledonia bench. 
and players scrambling around to get out of his way as he was helped off the ice by Abraham and another Caledonia player off to his left hand side. Those three players now in the Caledonia dressing room with 4.06 to play in period number one. Brown over the right side with the short pass, the shot by Fontana. And Fontana, a quick wrist shot, an inch off the ice, off the far corner. So Mitch Brown drawing his third assist. Fontana snapping a quick little wrist shot inside the right circle to the near side past the right pad of Jake Danson. Draw one by Connor Murphy. Played around the boards far side. Christmas picking up his first assist in the playoffs, shot by Nixon, and Murphy parked in front of the net with Jeff Malott with the scoring chance on the rebound to his right hand side. So Fontana drawing his Second point, a goal and an assist now for Cosimo Fontana. And with under four to go, the Caledonia Corvairs take a three to one lead. Briar Jonathan, then Cody Brown, Brandon Cullen, and Patton, then injured for the Corvairs. A Injury of real concern for Caledonia before Cosimo Fontana replied with the wrist shot with under four minutes to go. Two fifty one to go in the first. Tonight's game brought to you by Arc Pro HD. The draw won by the Pirates. Cullen, the first goal scorer for the Pirates, back to the right side of the line. <coughs> Quilty bringing it back the other way for Caledonia. The pass to Malott fired wide off the far corner. And the desk now on the near side half wall. Murphy top of the line, checked by Cullen. Cullen looking for a breakup of the play at the top of the blue line for his second goal. The Corvairs keeping it in. Malad into the slot, play broken up. Ratchford to the far side. And Christmas fires a shot off the glass on the far corner. Quilty in behind the net for Murphy. Murphy into the slot and down to one knee as Quilty attempting a shot in the high slot. Christmas a step over center, just wide. The centering pass, Jake Brown off the feed near corner from Scott Dorian. And it's played around the wall by Di Lorenzo. It's hammered the rest of the way to center ice down the right wing. By number 26, Quinn Geddes. And Jordan Peacock now to the box for the Corvairs. Draw taken by Ryle Ledger. He wins it back to Geddes. Geddes plays it to the half wall to Ackerman. And the shot by Geddes 
wide to the near side. Ledger back to the left to Mens Dietrich. Mens Dietrich gets it back. And the shot, Fox trying to pick it off on the backhand to the far side of the slot. Fox now plays it in past the end line. And it's slapped down the ice at the or by the right side of Furlong. Furlong taking it at his right side and throwing it past center. Mens Dietrich back for the defender, Geddes. Geddes up the wall to the Caledonia blue line. And a hit there by Kyler Nixon on Brandon Cullen. And a cross check coming up here as the whistle goes at the Caledonia blue line with 16.1 seconds to go. Kyler Nixon off for cross checking. So now the Pirates to a two man advantage. The draw from the left circle Caledonia zone and the shot by Mens Dietrich deflected and out of play, Spencer Fox may have got a piece of that in front. <laughs> Ancaster and Thorold starting their series tonight. That game starting at 7 p.m. in Thorold. Chatham and Strathroy also underway as the buzzer goes. We'll give you the out of town scores at the start of the second period. So at the end of one off Briar, Jonathan, Cody Brown and Cosimo Fontana goals, Brandon Cullen replying for the Pirates. It's the Caledonia Corvairs with a one nothing lead in the Golden Horseshoe Conference quarter final. The Corvairs with a 1-0 lead in the series and up here 3-1 at the intermission. It's the Caledonia Corvairs 3 and the Port Colburn Pirates 1. End of one of game number two, GOJHL quarterfinal action. Corvairs with a three to one lead as we're about set to start period number two. The Corvairs still on a two man disadvantage after penalties to Jordan Peacock and the cross check by Kyler Nixon. Forslund, Cody Brown and Justin Abraham out for the Corvairs. Mens Dietrich lining up on the right wing as Ackerman off on the left and Ledger taking the draw and going back to his own blue line to retrieve the puck to Geddes over to the far side back to Geddes. Geddes and the other defender Joseph D'Agostino going back and forth down the wall to Mens Dietrich. The shot by Geddes blocked by Brown and the shot taken high on the shoulder as Ryle Ledger and Justin Abraham pushing and shoving in the slot directly, <coughs> directly in front of Furlong. Seven seconds left on the penalty to Peacock. Abraham to the box now. 
And a player on the other side offsetting for the Pirates. 108 to go in the penalty to Kyler Nixon. So the Corvairs will remain two men short as Mitch Brown takes the draw beside the Caledonia blue line. Mens Dietrich turning around at the right circle. D'Agostino the shot and Furlong doing a nice job of deflecting the puck upwards into his right glove. The Corvairs getting one man back, Peacock back out of the box for Caledonia. So now just Kyler Nixon off for the next 52 seconds. Get us to the far side to D'Agostino and the pass out from the far end line trying to hit Mens Dietrich at the near side. The shot by D'Agostino wide to the far side and off the glass and Geddes ripping a hard wrist shot from the left side of the blue line past the outstretched left glove hand of Furlong. And with 18.46 to go in period number two, the Port Colburn Pirates cut the Caledonia lead to one. Quinn Geddes with the power play goal. <coughs> and now Furlong serving two minutes. So the Corvairs putting themselves deep in penalty trouble. The Pirates to continue on the power play. Still 30 seconds showing to Kyler Nixon and the Port Colburn bench looking for a five on three as opposed to a five on four as Quilty skates off beside the Caledonia bench. And indeed the power play goal, well, <coughs> well Nixon was in the box, so some confusion there as Murphy and D'Agostino look on at the far side. The Nixon penalty canceling out on the Quinn Geddes goal. At 1.14. Furlong taking a penalty after, after the shot past his right glove and now the Corvairs winning the draw well short handed. Murphy to Ratchford, Ratchford rings it around the wall down the near side. Here's the announcement now as Geddes dumps it in deep behind the Caledonia net. Quilty and Geddes tied up on the near side. Ratchford gets in there and tries to fire a pass down the near side before he's tripped up. And Geddes now called for a cross check. So after the power play goal by Geddes at 114, he goes to the box for a cross check on Todd Ratchford. And the faceoff coming out all the way down into the other end off to the left of goaltender Jake Danson. Blunt winds up and fires a hard rising slap shot into the left shoulder of Danson. Other scores on the out of town scoreboard. All quarter final game number ones. Thorold on top of the Ancaster Avalanche with 340 to go in the second. The Chatham Maroons with a slim 3-2 lead over the Strathroy Rockets. The Leamington Flyers blanking St. Mary's 3 to nothing. 
with 7.14 remaining in the second. And the London Nationals, last year's Sutherland Cup winners, with a 3-2 lead over the Sarnia Legionnaires in the second period of play with 5.43 to go. The backhand by Blunt to Nixon. Nixon plays it up the left wing. And Cody Brown, past center, fires a quick wrist shot off the right pad of Danson. Cullen going down the left wing, has it slapped away by Blunt. Cullen with the first poor Colburn goal. Fontana pass center, Mitch Brown down the right wing and stops at the half wall, poor Colburn zone. Now Brown checked up against the wall in past the end line by number 20, Dane Johnson. Ratchford back to Mitch Brown at that half wall, back to Ratchford. And the shot falling down in front is Jonathan and a high shot from the left point by Jamie Forsland. Ratchford on the return pass off the feed from Jonathan at the half wall. And the penalty to Brock Ackerman now expiring. I had reported earlier Quinn Geddes in the box. Ackerman in the 96 sweater, Geddes in the number 26 sweater. Geddes on the power play from Joseph D'Agostino at 114, cutting the Caledonia lead to one. Geddes scoring from the point on the hard shot past the glove of Furlong. Exactly four minutes into period number two. Murphy to take the draw opposite Royal Ledger. And this time Geddes in the box and the Corvairs to the five on four for the next two minutes. Poor Corn. <coughs> Winning the draw, the defense throws it around the near sidewall. Quilty able to keep it in. Quilty to Brown. And Cody, the pass along the ice. Brown gets it back over to Nixon. Murphy looking open down on the near corner. Murphy with all kinds of space parked off to the side of the poor Colburn net. Murphy now losing the puck at the far side before getting it back, playing it in behind the net for Quilty. And Fontana in front of the net, checked off the puck by number six, John DiLorenzo. Nixon the shot through traffic. Murphy chases it down at the far side, gives it back to Nixon, to Murphy. Murphy past the end line to Fontana, top of the blue line for Nixon. Brown back to Nixon, over to the far side to Cosimo Fontana. The Caledonia Corvairs passing it around the perimeter here. And now Murphy in behind the poor Colburn net, plays it back to the left side of the blue line for Nixon. Nixon to the corner for Fontana and jamming away at it near corner is Connor Murphy before he's bodied down to the ice. Murphy falling down at the far right side of Jake Danson. Checked by Patrick Desjardins. The Pirates dressing only 15 players tonight, 14 last night. Abraham to Blunt, 20 seconds to go in the penalty to Geddes. Quilty in behind the net now. One last opportunity as Gourlay fires a shot high over the poor Colburn net. 
Blunt to Quilty, end of the slot. Peacock looking for a shot along the ice through traffic. And a shot by Abraham trying to sneak it inside the near post. So the Corvairs blanking the poor Colburn Pirates last night, but finding themselves in penalty trouble early in the second and the Pirates able to cut the lead to one on the Quinn Geddes power play goal at 114 from J Joseph D'Agostino. Christmas bats it down at the right side of the line, plays it to the side wall near corner for Mitch Brown. And Brown checked with his back up against the wall before the Pirates able to play the puck down through the neutral zone off the left wing. Christmas, the shot and the deflection by Jonathan. Jonathan pulls it out and throws a backhand pass off the far side. Jonathan into the slot to Dorian and winding up is Ratchford. Ratchford with the no look backhand pass, the return feed to Dorian. Ratchford top of the line. Mitch Brown checked up against the wall. He plays a long pass, ringing it all the way around the far side. And a delayed call here looks like Briar Jonathan being called on the far corner. Mitch Brown to the box with 12.45 to go, second period of play. And Jonathan, so Mitch Brown with a unsportsmanlike after the play. Royal Ledger taking the draw from the left side. And the Pirates now to the five on three. Mentz Dietrich from the left side of the blue line plays it to the far corner, back to Mentz Dietrich, down to the near end line. Mentz Dietrich winds up and the shot past Cody Brown. Furlong making a nice save in the midsection as the puck slated toward the far corner. Mentz Dietrich plays it to the right hand side of the blue line. Mentz Dietrich back to the far side. So the player in the corner and Mentz Dietrich on the left side. Mentz Dietrich spending a lot of time with the puck on this power play. D'Agostino on the far side and down low in the corner was Spencer Fox. Mentz Dietrich staying out on the left side of the blue line and he gets it again. A lot of set play on the five on three. And Mentz Dietrich, the return feed once again from D'Agostino. And his shot, James breaking a stick and the half of the blade going flying along the ice into the near corner before the whistle goes. A minute to go in the penalties to Mitch Brown and Greg Christmas. And finally, the Pirates off to the box, a little bit of an even up. The Corvairs will remain a man short for a minute. And Ryle Ledger spending four minutes in the box. Ledger shaking his head on the way there. Mentz Dietrich slapping it to the left wing for Ackerman. 
Ackerman skating at over center. And Abraham tries to stick it away with the front of his blade. Degas <laughs> to the far side, the shot, and they score. Joseph D'Agostino off the top of the blue line, right side. D'Agostino drawing his second point of the game. And with 36 seconds left in the second Mitch Brown power play, or penalty rather, the Port Colburn Pirates tie the game up at three with 11.21 remaining. Brock Ackerman taking the draw and the two teams now playing for a side. Christmas in the box for another 33 seconds before the Caledonia Corvairs will go to the power play for three minutes off the double minor, the slashing and the unsportsmanlike to the Pirates. Fontana to center, Quilty behind the defense, moves to the backhand, and Danson kicking it aside at the near post. The long feed by Ackerman to Fox, broken up by Brown. The back feed to Fontana, the wrap around by Brown, and Danson barely getting the left pad across at the last minute. Cody Brown trying to go side to side on the wraparound. A very quick move by Brown sweeping around the net off the far corner and Brown trying to tuck it in on the near corner. Quilty the shot, Gourlay looking for a deflection, the weak shot cleared by the Pirates. And Brown, the pass ahead to Jake Brown. Three Browns on this Caledonia squad. Mitch drawing all three assists on the Caledonia goal. <laughs> Cody to the point to Nixon. And <coughs> Nixon wiring. <coughs> Kyler Nixon wiring a Hard slap shot, or wrist shot rather, off the outside of the far post. Up and out of play, and a face off beside the poor Colburn blue line. Draw one by the Pirates. And the long pass by Geddes from his own side of the blue line, deep into the Caledonia zone. Nixon splitting a forward and trying to go past the two pirate defensemen on the way to the near corner. Backhand pass, Gourlay, and falling down on the backhand side, far post is Jake Brown looking for the go-ahead Caledonia fourth goal. We've reached the halfway point of game number two GOJHL quarterfinal between the number one seed Caledonia Corvairs and the number eight seed Port Colburn Pirates. The Corvairs laying a beating on the Pirates last night by a score of seven to nothing. But the Pirates responding with the two power play goals in the second period. Quinn Geddes and Joseph D'Agostino off the points on power play goals. The Corvairs running into penalty problems. Nixon mishandles for Murphy back to Nixon. And Murphy over top the right circle moves past Geddes, or John DiLorenzo, excuse me. And the wrist shot, Connor Murphy, the puck is loose. And Malott side of the net, Peacock, and the shot hammered wide by Nixon. Nixon gloving it down, keeping it in with the left hand. And Peacock from the end line back to Nixon. 
moves to the right-hand side of the top of the line and plays it in behind the net for Connor Murphy. A poor Colburn player knocked over at the near side of the net. Spencer Fox, the last to touch the disc with 8.02 remaining as the whistle went. And DiLorenzo to the box now for the Pirates. So the referees not letting anything go in this second period. Both teams drawing a lot of penalties and so far the Pirates, the opportunists of it all, scoring two power play goals at 114 and with 11.21 remaining. A timeout being called. The Corvairs getting the number one seed in these playoffs after the league awarded points to the Corvairs and well and Junior Canadians. The Junior Canadians and Corvairs filing protests. St. Catharines using eight imports instead of the allowable seven. And the league office upholding the appeals and the Caledonia Corvairs as a result finishing in the number one spot overall winning the regular season title with 91 points as opposed to the Falcons 89. The Welland Junior Canadians also receiving a point out of that protest. The Junior Canadians in the number three slot facing the Niagara Falls Canucks and losing game one of their series by a score of three to two. Murphy past the end line, hitting the side of the net, 56 seconds remaining in the penalty to DiLorenzo. Nixon for Brown. Brown two steps off the blue line, fires a shot along the ice just wide of the net. Connor Murphy with the attempted tip. Fontana falls to his knees. Checked by Mentz Dietrich. And number eight, Patrick Desjardins. Nixon with the quick turnaround. Danson losing his stick. Or that was the defender right directly beside him to his left. Mentz Dietrich back for the Pirates before Fontana with a shot to the near side. Danson with the save. 17 seconds remaining in the Caledonia power play. 6.19 to go in period number two. A 3-3 tie between the Corvairs and the Pirates. The Corvairs winning game number one. Brown, the high rising shot on the pass back to Blunt. Blunt with the rising shot. Dorian with looking for a shot in front of the net and Mitch Brown tipping it just wide. Jonathan at the near side. And now Geddes out of the box down the right wing. The centering pass. The shot and they score! Mitch Brown in the slot from Abraham. No, it looks like Abraham will get credit for the wrist shot. Rish, Abraham with the wrist shot to the near side. Over top the glove of Danson and the Corvairs retake the lead. So end to end rushes by both sides before Abraham goes on the three on two. And at 14-14, Abraham puts the Corvairs 
back out in front. The Corvairs with a 3-1 lead before the Pirates responded with two power play goals. And now Abraham putting the Corvairs back out in front on the three on two. The wrist shot to the near side at 14-14. Gorlay now taking the draw at the left circle, poor Colburn zone. The Pirates winning the draw, playing it out the near side of the neutral zone. And Peacock over center to Gorlay. Mens Dietrich past the end line and he fires a shot behind that end line off the side of the mask of Furlong. Furlong taking a hard shot by the black disc at the right side of the head. Furlong out to play it now up to Gourlay. Brown to Peacock. Peacock skating down the right wing and stopping at the half wall. Gourlay high slot slightly to the left and <coughs> firing a shot wide to the near side. Gets it back in past the end line. And the pass out by Peacock into the slot. The Corvairs now regrouping inside their own line with exactly four minutes to go, second period of play. Fontana unable to poke it out. And Fox just offside. <laughs> At the top of the line, Ackerman ahead of him on the left side. Face off beside the Caledonia blue line. Murphy wins it to Blunt. Blunt to the far side to Nixon. Blunt over center, the long pass to Connor Murphy. And the pass too far to the forehand of Murphy. And Danson covering up at the far post. Murphy the gets down low to win the draw. The pass across along the ice to Quilty. And Quilty firing a shot just wide. Here's another opportunity by Quilty along the ice going to the near side this time. So Matt Quilty with two good chances along the ice off both sides. Quilty looking for the fifth Caledonia goal. Quilty to Nixon. Nixon winds up and it hits. Ryle Ledger. Ledger taking the puck the other way before moving offside at the Caledonia line. Forsland banking a pass off the wall. And the whistle going with exactly three minutes to go. Forsland with two goals and five assists for seven points in the regular season. Brown falling down. Cody Brown with 93 points on the year. Both of those players, Forsland and Cody Brown, additions from the OHL's Barry Colts. Brown missing the first eight games for the Corvairs before finishing third in league scoring, second on the team to Connor Murphy. Brown with 38 goals and 55 assists as he tries to tip one into the top corner. And the rising deflection out of play directly behind the poor Colburn net.
The Pirates win the draw, but Abraham able to keep it in. Riley Wilson unable to take it out at the left wing. Slapped out through the neutral zone. Justin Abraham quickly gets back for the Corvairs. Brown sneaks by the check of Riley Wilson. Wilson about twice the size of Mitch Brown as he knocks over Mitch Brown inside the blue line once again. Fontana, a beautiful move. He shoots and scores! Briar Jonathan putting in the wrist shot or Fontana, rather, Briar Jonathan making the move underneath the Port Colburn right winger. Jonathan turning the Port Colburn player inside out, walking right around him and shoveling a pass along the ice to Fontana. Well, how about that? I was right the first time. So it was Fontana with the move. Mitch Brown with his fifth assist tonight. The number one assist on all five of those goals. Nixon firing a shot off the cross ice feed behind the end line by Spencer Gourlay. So it was Fontana with the move on the near side. Once again, often hard to tell, hard to differentiate the numbers. Sevens flying all around. Fontana off the near side feed, finding a wide open Briar Jonathan. And Jonathan with the wrist shot to the top corner near side. Under a minute to go now. The Corvairs with a 5-3 lead after giving up two second period power play goals to the Port Colburn Pirates. The Pirates scoring at 114 of the second and with 1121 remaining in period number two. Abraham scoring with 14-14 or at the 14-14 mark. And Jonathan with the fifth Corvair goal. The Corvairs with a 3-1 lead after two. And the Caledonia squad restoring their two goal lead. As the buzzer goes, we've hit the second intermission at the end of two in game two of the GOJHL quarterfinal between the number one seed Caledonia Corvairs and the number eight seed Port Colburn Pirates with the Corvairs in a one nothing series lead. At the end of two, it's the Caledonia Corvairs five and the Port Colburn Pirates three. The Corvairs regaining their two goal lead as we're just about set to start period number three of game number two of the GOJHL quarterfinal. The top seed Caledonia Corvairs with the series lead one to nothing after their seven nothing victory in Port Colburn last night. Gourlay to the far side, Peacock. Plays it to Nixon. 20 seconds into period three, Nixon slides a pass to Peacock. 
Peacock plays it around the wall. Brown into the corner with DiLorenzo. Spencer Fox comes up with it at the top of the blue line. And Ackerman trying to play it from center from the far wall has it taken away by Blunt. Pass side of the net for Gourlay. Off the feet along the ice by Cody Brown who goes off on a change. Gourlay around the defender. <coughs> and Gourlay with the backhand pass to Connor Murphy. Murphy nearly tipping it into the near side on the forehand. Murphy with 96 points in the regular season, finishing second in league scoring. <coughs> Mitch Brown assisting on all five Caledonia goals. Geddes and D'Agostino a second period Port Colburn goals before Abraham, Abraham and Jonathan responded for the Corvairs shot along the ice by Murphy. Abraham comes off the blue line, plays it to the line for Malott and Malott uses his size to come off the far side, creating space and firing the puck just wide to the near side. Murphy, the pass underneath his stick, goes in behind the net to retrieve it, but it's poked away by a Port Colburn defender on the right side. Murphy with the attempted wraparound. And Danson keeping his right pad against the post to make the save. Eighteen oh four to go in period number three. Brown to take the draw with Matthew White. Mitch wins it. And Ratchford hammers it around the board off the glass. Fontana keeping it in. Fontana with that nice move around the Port Colburn left winger. Shoveling the pass to Briar Jonathan for the fifth Caledonia goal. Inside of two minutes, two minutes to play. In the second, Ratchford winds up. Fires it along the ice and Fontana looking to tip in a rebound off the backhand before the Pirates able to clear up and out. Ratchford over the line, takes it by himself all the way around the far side of the net. And checked up against the wall now by Royal Ledger. Radford for Briar Jonathan and the puck bouncing off the left shoulder of Briar Jonathan and the whistle going. In, in other quarter final action, the Thorold Blackhawks with a three nothing lead on the Ancaster Avalanche, just two minutes to go in the game. Most games nearing completion, please check www.gojhl.ca for your final scores. We'll assume at this point that most of those scores have gone final. Chatham with a 5-2 Victory over the Strathroy Rockets. Leamington 5 0 over St. Mary's and the London Nationals defeating the Sarnia Legionnaires by a score of 5 1. Puck up beside the poor Colburn bench. And a big hit by Blunt. Cody Brown to Gourlay. 
Brown hit, but manages to get a very short pass away to Spencer. Men's Dietrich drops it into the slot and the Pirates play it up the boards down the left wing. The shot side of the net by Cullen. Brandon Cullen looking for his second goal, getting the Port Colburn first period goal and a shot by Peacock off the right shoulder of Danson. Brown, the shot, Gourlay, and they score! Jordan Peacock tipping in the rebound. Peacock with an empty net. The shot off the point by Cody Brown. And Peacock maneuvering himself in behind the goaltender Danson and throwing it into the empty net for the sixth Caledonia goal. So at 4.57, the Corvairs double up the Pirates. Peacock to Gourlay. Gourlay side of the net now past the end line. Ratchford off the blue line right side. Plays it in for Cody Brown in behind the poor Colburn net. And a high pass up and out by the Port Colburn forward. Number 77, Jared Taylor. The Corvairs back to the attack. Radford past the end line near corner. Turns around off the check. Quilty lets go. And an open shot by Connor Murphy inside the right circle. Malott, the shot hit Geddes, went to the right side to Christmas. Quilty and a Port Colburn forward, or the defenseman rather, John DiLorenzo. The Port Colburn sweater is a little hard to see, no number on the sleeves of the Port Colburn players, so when their backs are turned to me, it's a little hard to differentiate the play. Shot by Spencer Fox wide of the net. Quilty tries to tip it ahead down the right side. Nixon past the blue line, firing a shot and dancing quickly getting out in front of the puck. The shot by Quilty off the far side. Danson allowing seven goals last night. Danson rather sharp at times despite giving up, <coughs> giving up six Caledonia goals. And he throws out the right pad with authority Fontana lets it go, and the long pass from Forsland inside the Caledonia line goes for icing with 12.42 remaining. The Corvairs off till Sunday, game three at two o'clock in Port Colburn. Riley Wilson far side, Fontana takes it away, Furlong plays it up the boards past his own half a center, and Brandon Cullen plays it to the other side of the red line before the whistle goes. The St. Catharines Falcons and Fort Erie Meteors yet to see action in their first round series. The Corvairs were to play the Fort Erie Meteors. However, the 
upholding of the league protest left the Corvairs with two more points on the season than the Falcons. The Junior Canadians also getting a couple points out of that. The shot and they score. Mens Dietrich off the left side of the blue line and Furlong getting probably 70% of the puck but not enough as the puck goes under his equipment and into the net on the near corner. Mens Dietrich with the fourth Port Colburn goal with 12-10 remaining in the third. Tonight's game brought to you by ARC Pro HD. Tonight's presentation of game two of the GOJHL quarterfinal between the number one seed Caledonia Corvairs and the number eight seeded Port Colburn Pirates. Visit us online at www.arcprohd.com for a full list of video broadcasting services. Also visit www.gojhl.ca for all your up-to-date scores in the first round playoff bracket as the shot Shot by Ratchford, picked up now on the <coughs> near side by Peacock. Peacock to Gourlay, Gourlay feeds the <coughs> back pass for Christmas, Brown into the slot for Gourlay. Gourlay turns around back to Christmas and Christmas mishandling and going to the other side of the red line to retrieve the puck. And a shot wide by Ratchford. Murphy trying to tip it in front. Quilty in behind the net. Murphy, the University of Michigan draftee for next season, drops it back to the top of the point. Ratchford the shot wide. Murphy for Malott. The Corvairs doing a good job here cycling the puck inside the poor Colburn line, despite the fact that both teams are at full strength. Nixon, they pass over center for Murphy, broken up by the left side of the poor Colburn defense. The Corvairs with one in the third, the Peacock goal, Peacock finding himself wide open. The shot along the ice covered up by Danson at the far side. Gourlay the shot from the point at 457 and Peacock Finding himself wide open, Danson having to come out and make the save, and the puck moving in behind Danson, and Peacock hitting the open net, then Mens Dietrich off the left side of the blue line for the Pirates. Furlong getting most of the puck, but the puck going in at the near side along the ice, and the quick shot by Cody Brown down below the right circle. Ackerman losing the puck to Kyler Nixon. And from center now, Desjardins banks it in down the near wall. Nixon picking it up for the Corvairs. Nixon to the Port Colburn blue line. Jake Brown falling down, trying a deflection into the zone on the backhand, but the whistle going. Brown offside as he fell down. 
Well, no, I'm incorrect. I'm sorry. The puck going out of play and Mitch Brown taking the draw from the left circle. Abraham to the far side. Forsland backhands it up the wall. Broken up by the Port Colburn defense. DiLorenzo momentarily. Mitch Brown plays it back up the boards. Mitch Brown with assists on five of the first six Caledonia goals. Cody Brown assisting on goal number six. The Corvairs out in front three to one after one period of play. Briar Jonathan. Fontana and Cody Brown on the power play. The Corvairs finding themselves in penalty difficulty in the second. Geddes and D'Agostino then replying for the Pirates at 1.14 and with 11.21 remaining. Abraham and Jonathan with his second and the shot by Nixon top of the blue line. Hits the stick of Menz Dietrich and goes high and out of play in behind the poor Colburn net. The Pirates off for high sticking and the Corvairs to the five on four man advantage. Peacock the backhand pass to Murphy. Peacock gets it back at the near wall. Murphy top of the line for Nixon. The return on the forehand of Murphy. In behind the end line now, Quilty backhands it out to Connor. Nixon the backhander to Murphy. Murphy to the near side end line to Quilty. And Nixon to the other side to Brown. And Connor Murphy trying to deflect it in on the near side. So Connor Murphy busy at the near side down the left wing trying to make something happen for the Corvairs. 721 remaining in the second. So again, Elmira, Kitchener, Niagara Falls, Waterloo, Thorold, Chatham, Leamington, and the London Nationals all with one nothing leads in their quarterfinal series. The St. Catharines Falcons and Fort Erie Meteors yet to play. Murphy with speed around the far side, tripped up at the end line, but manages to get a shot with seven minutes to go. <coughs> The Corvairs now on the <coughs> two-man advantage. John DiLorenzo to the penalty box. Cody Brown the shot and he scores! Cody Brown rifling a wrist shot with authority from the top of the blue line to the top far corner and the Caledonia Corvairs repeat their performance of last night, drawing their seventh goal against three for the Pirates. Cody Brown with his second goal. Corvairs win the draw. Brown with the same play, shot off the blue line. Brown to Nixon. Brown from Quilty at 13.09. Murphy to Brown, Brown along the ice and the nice tip by Quilty just wide at the far side. Gourlay plays it to the left wing, Quilty to Nixon, Nixon moves all the way to the end line far side off the blue line, the shot from the circle bouncing around off the glove of Danson. Murphy looking to poke it inside of the net. And a high wrist shot 
Gorlay wide open at the bottom of the right circle. Danson coming up big with the glove twice in that Caledonia possession. The shot at the end line by Murphy bouncing around before Gorlay almost got goal number eight as well. Cody Brown with two goals and an assist. Fontana with a goal and an assist. Mitch Brown with five assists, the first Caledonia assist on the first five Caledonia goals before the Corvairs Peacock scoring from Gourlay and Cody Brown. And then Cody Brown from Matt Quilty for goal number seven. Blunt losing the pocket, going on the stick of Briar Jonathan at the sidewall far side. Jonathan with two goals. His first at 6.39 of period number one. And then with under two minutes left in period number two, Jonathan in the neutral zone, the pass to the left wing for Fontana. Fontana looking for goal number three. Jonathan, or Abraham rather, jumping into the slot. Abraham with the fourth Caledonia goal. The Pirates tying the game up at three on two power play goals before Abraham got goal number four on the wrist shot. Shot by Christmas along the ice. Jake Brown, Quilty hitting the, or Jeff Malott rather, hitting the outside of the goal post, getting a second rebound, and the backhand just wide of the net, ending up out of play on the near corner. 4 minutes and 5 seconds to go in period number 3. The Corvairs about to go up 2 to nothing in their best of 7 GOJHL <laughs> quarter final. The next game in Port Colburn Sunday at 2 o'clock. Barring a snowstorm, I will see you there. I'm not a lover of driving in bad weather, and we will see you back here Monday night for a 7.30 contest, game four at the HCCC. The Pirates winning the draw from the left circle inside their own zone. And firing a shot, a wrister by Riley Wilson into the padding of Furlong. And the shot wide to the near side by Patrick Desjardins. Quilty over center on the cross ice feed from Briar Jonathan. Mens Dietrich tips it to the blue line. And <coughs> Riley Wilson playing it deep for the Pirates before going off on a change. The shot, the quick shot along the ice by Connor Murphy. And Murphy now moving to the near side. The shot wide this time by Kyler Nixon. Nixon picking up his own rebound. <coughs> Skating to the top of the blue line. The puck played the length of the ice for an icing by Nick DeLuca. The Corvairs winning all six regular season meetings. 
and two minutes and 22 seconds away from going up two to nothing in their quarter final. Game three, Sunday afternoon in Port Colburn at the Vale Center. The Health and Wellness Center in Port Colburn, also known as the Vale Center. Not quite sure of the full name of that arena, but it's a the rink features several rinks, a swimming pool. Ratchford from his own blue line. The Port Colburn rink also featuring healthy eating. The only two restaurants in that building are Subways, so if you're heading down, there's a shot and they score. Brock Ackerman all alone inside the left circle with 109 to go. <coughs> Scores goal number five for the Port Colburn Pirates. So the Pirates draw themselves back to within two, perhaps looking to pull their goalie here. So if you're a lover of junk food, say hot dogs or nachos and cheese items you might find featured here, you'll see nothing of the sort featured at the Vale Center Sunday afternoon at two. Again, a reminder, the only two restaurants in that building, the team sponsored by Subway. Nixon plays it up beside the Caledonia bench. For the Caledonia Corvairs, reporting from game two of the GOJHL quarterfinal series, I'm John Molson. The final 22 seconds, the Corvairs in a 7 5 lead as Nixon plays it down the near side, Mens Dietrich to the far side of the blue line, and he fires a long shot. Furlong out to his right hand side to play the puck. Blunt to Nixon past the end line. The buzzer going, so after a 7 0 blanking in game one, the Corvairs get two goals from Briar Jonathan, two from Cosimo Fontana. Briar Jonathan, tonight's player of the game, with the two goals, the nice walk around move at the near side before shoveling a pass inside the left circle in period number two. We'll await the PA announcement. So the Corvairs win 7 0 in game one in Port Colburn. Win this one 7 5. Multiple point games for Briar Jonathan, Cosimo Fontana, Cody Brown, Mitch Brown with the five assists. And we'll see you Sunday if you're going up to Port Colburn, 2 p.m. at the Vale Center. Otherwise, We'll see you back here for game four, 7.45 Monday night at the HCCC for game four. Once again, tonight's final score, the Corvairs seven, the Port Colburn Pirates five. In game number two, the Port Colburn Pirates down two to nothing in the series. The Corvairs now with a 2-0 series lead heading to game three Sunday afternoon in Port Colburn. Good night from the HCCC.